Okay, gang. So in the last year, we managed to get, I think by my count, we got three new game loops. We got medical gameplay near the start of the year. We got salvage and racing. And yeah, for those last two, I consider anything 318 a last year's release. Uh, so I thought that might be fun to jump in and see what game loops we might be getting in the new year, what improvements we might get on the existing game loops. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a shallow dive on this and see what has a good shot of popping up in the next year. Let's dive in. So in no specific order except alphabetical, which I guess is a kind of order, here's what I'm thinking will be popping up. And first I'm going to couch this full caveat that these are things that I think may pop up they could pop up just based on the deliverables there on the roadmap right now on the progress tracker uh doesn't mean that they're not going to bump into problems it doesn't mean that they might not have server meshing issues that just stall everything out like 317 and 318 did uh doesn't mean something else might not take priority but as of right now this is what i am reading in the card so let's go ahead and hop right in so the first one and the one that I think that is probably the has the best shot of dropping in the next couple months is Bounty Hunter V2. Uh, and this one has a 69 week sprint. Nice. And it is due to wrap around mid May. It'll probably get pushed out a little bit further than that just due to I'd assume they're going to add more UI and sounds to the whole thing. Uh, but Bounty Hunter V2 is going to be where as opposed to now where you just fly out and blow someone up or go down into a cave and shoot someone or go down into a bunker and shoot someone, uh, you're going to actually have an app that says this is where the person was last spotted. And then you have to kind of start tracking them through commsats and locations that they've been. So it'll be a lot more involved than it is right now. Right now you get a God marker and you know exactly where that person or NPC is. In the future, that's gonna change and you're gonna have to actually do the hunting part of bounty hunting. You're gonna have to actually figure out where they're going, set traps for them. And this, there's no guarantee that this is part is coming, but I would assume they might start having it that if you take someone alive, you'll get more money, like double the money, or you'll get half the money if you kill them. Uh, especially with regeneration being a thing, that would make sense lore wise, because if you're killing someone, you're immediately letting them off the hook and putting them back into the world wherever they might regenerate. If you capture them, they're not regenerating, they're alive and they're sitting in prison. So uh, in that sense, that sort of bounty hunting if it's coming this year, would be very cool, but that might be Bounty Hunting V3. Uh, the next one that I wanted to talk about was Cargo. I'm calling this one Tier 2. Uh, right now, we just kind of have very basic cargo in the game. Uh, you, you buy stuff, it appears on your ship. Uh, there's very little interaction with the um, commodities at all. You just... You buy them, you sell them, some you can sell for more money. There's zero reason to sell any of the low tier items. Eventually what is gonna happen is that Quanta will determine a market rate. So if everybody is selling the same thing, say Laranite, Laranite's value is gonna drop because there's so much of it on the market that nobody needs it anymore. Meanwhile, something like iron might actually start to raise in value because all of these production companies on say Arc Corp need it and no one is bringing it to them. Uh, and eventually the Quanta themselves will fill in those gaps, but a player, their advantage is gonna be to get ahead of that curve. 
the first version that we're going to be getting on this will actually be the physicalized cargo, which we kind of have a brief window on right now, but that's going to start ramping up. You're going to start getting cargo on freight elevators and pretty much anything that you buy will be stored on site. And then when you get to your ship, you can call up your freight elevator it'll bring up those things. So either the personal items that you have or the cargo or both, and then you have to physically load it onto your ship or you have to physically unload your ship and put it on the freight elevator and send it into the local system. That's going to be some of the things that we will probably start seeing the bare basics of this year. For the next one, this is probably, I'd say in between wishful thinking and kind of an educated guess. I know we're going to be getting some aspects of this this year, but I'm not sure whether it's going to actually reach the level that's in my head. And of course, on this one, I'm talking about engineering and multi-crew gameplay, which to me is more or less the same thing. Engineering will eventually be a lot more involved where you're going around and fixing components and fixing uh, modules and nodes throughout the ship. Whereas multi-crew, you might be sitting on the bridge doing a specific task that isn't flying and isn't operating a turret or something like that. I could see the MFD rework actually playing a role for some of the engineering screens for controlling portions of the ship and engineering aspects, either directly from the bridge or at some other station in the ship. But the biggest of them all is probably going to be resource management, which right now is showing that's going to wrap sometime in September. I wouldn't be surprised to see that stretch out, but once we have resource management, it's probably a really good sign that true engineering gameplay is going to be arriving. I do expect them to roll out resource management to us in a little bit of a module state. So maybe you have resource management on artificial gravity now, and now you've got it on the pressure in rooms and that kind of thing. I could see them doing that, of kind of rolling it out gradually over time as they get things finished. But with so many deliverables kind of focused on that multi-crew aspect, like um, roles that actually aren't piloting or controlling the turret, I think that this one's probably probably good for a tier zero, probably around the middle of the year, provided other blockers don't pop up. Now for kind of one of the more surprise game loops that I think is going to drop into the game that's going to surprise a lot of people is actually the game loop of hacking. And I think hacking will look exactly like this. Okay, maybe not. But I do think that hacking will be a very important game loop moving forward. It'll be how borders will actually hack through the airlocks on your ship to get access to it. It'll also be counter hacking. It'll be you on your ship preventing others from hacking. So it'll kind of have a PVP aspect in that sense. Uh, if they know you're coming and say something like a legionnaire, you're going to need to be able to hack the airlock so that your legionnaire can dock up with their ship and get your marines on board. So if the legionnaire comes back on the roadmap, this is definitely going to be a thing with boarding. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll have the counter gameplay in there. They haven't talked about hacking really other than basic UI elements of it. Uh, and they haven't said that there'll be countermeasures, but they have said that there'll be security measures on ships. And they've been talking about this for a couple of years, just kind of low key. And for this one, I want to look at Security Network V1, which is also wrapping around September. And I don't think that that is an accident, that that's kind of hitting at the same time as the sort of engineering, the late stage engineering things like resource management. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if security of a ship in the electronic sense is kind of tied up in that engineering game loop. But I do think that hacking can be a game loop on its own. And I mean, I could think of a few ships like Legionnaire or the Herald or possibly even ships like the Mercury Star Runner. They'll be making use of this game loop to a great extent. 
in about a month or so, we're going to see a deliverable start hitting work that's called Actor Status Tier 2. And what's interesting about this is that reading the description, it's dealing with things like hygiene, NPC status tracking, multiple bytes, DNA integrity, medical insurance, cybernetic limbs, and cloning. Now, those last four really make me think that we might be getting a medical tier two level. It's not quite the promised land of doing surgery on people, but I think it might be the first hint that we'll start getting that's going to be slightly more involved than just hitting things with beams or a pen. You're going to have to actually diagnose what is wrong. And if you screw up, people are going to have lost limbs and they might start getting like defective clones. Like if you're if you set a regeneration point is Grim Hex, you might get a lower quality clone than if you set it as somewhere like Microtech. So there might be benefits to going to one place or the other, and that will really start to matter once they roll in Pyro. Again, that's not something that they've confirmed, that's just something that I'm speculating on. For the next one, I think that mining, uh, even though it's the one that they've said, even within a week, that it's probably the most polished game loop, and I don't think anyone would argue with that outside of like combat. Uh, mining is pretty far along, but uh, they're obviously going to keep working on this and polishing it. They've still got work to do. We know the there is probably a couple mining ships missing. Uh, we know that there's got to be gas miners out there. We know there's probably a ship size in between, say, the Mole and the Orion. The Orion is a gigantic capital size miner, and the Mole is like a mid-sized miner. So you've kind of got your starter in the Prospector. You've got your mid-tier in the Mole. Then you got like a blank space. And then you've got the Orion. So there's probably something around 600i or Starfarer size that's a miner, unless you want to consider the Odyssey that, which I don't, because you got to have something that's going to have size three mining lasers on it. Something that does almost everything the Orion does, but falls a little bit short. Like maybe it doesn't refine, maybe it doesn't spread things out. Uh, but that's got to be out there somewhere. So I would think that we're going to get more polishing on mining. I wouldn't really expect it to hit another tier, but it could. We might get something because there's got to be something that the Orion mines that the mole can't. So there's got to be larger asteroids and it'll have to be an asteroid because the Orion can't move down into atmosphere. So while I don't think that that will necessarily be coming this year, I do think that we'll start hearing about those plans just because mining is so polished, it kind of sets the gold standard for what they want game loops to be. So with the coming of the E1 spirit, we're going to get true passenger transportation game loops. This is something that's been talked about since the age of the Genesis Starliner, and they joked and maybe didn't joke about the Mixmaster. And if you don't know about the Mixmaster, it was something that's been around for ages where in order to with this game loop with uh, passenger transportation, there's certain elements involved, but it's all reputation. So if you get people there quickly and safely and you don't jostle them around, kind of think of it as a Lyft or Uber. If the dude is driving at five miles per hour, you're probably not going to give him a good rating. If he's driving 170 and whipping around corners and stuff, you're probably not going to give him a good rating there either. And the same thing will probably apply here is that passengers want to get there and feel safe. Now, how well CIG can actually implement that is another question. Uh, but I think with the server tech coming along, the odds that the NPCs will actually have a little bit more ability to maneuver within a rating system like that will be much better. And part of the Mixmaster 5000 or whatever the hell it was called, you could supply certain elements to those passengers to make them more comfortable and more happy over longer journeys. So a passenger says, I want this food and you have to go and push the right buttons on there. So it's almost like those cooking simulators. Uh, I could see that coming. 
So this is probably the most important game loop and it's called hitting that like button. And with that said, let's keep on going. So this isn't necessarily a game loop that's directly being worked on, but a lot like Soft Death, I think piracy will be getting kind of a two tier two pass. And this is more related to other features that are going on rather than them actually having a tag on there that says piracy tier two. Uh, better EVA will certainly help them. Hacking, Soft Death, all of these things kind of point to piracy becoming more and more polished and not necessarily directly, but indirectly through the other mechanics. And I think that that is far more likely how piracy will be implemented. Refining is another thing that I think is coming. There's nothing on the deliverables of the progress tracker right now that point to this, but there is kind of elements of refining that are already in the game. And we have a ship like the Expanse that I hope they rename out there that's sole specific function is refining. And it would sort of make sense that now that mining is kind of hitting near the end of the road, that you'd start rolling in refining as a, at a tier zero level. So I could see that coming this year as kind of the next iteration of mining is actually refining. Uh, we know that's coming. We're not sure when it might not be this year. It might be the year after 2024. But um, I do think I would not be shocked if the expanse actually comes back on the roadmap. And if it does, we're definitely getting refining this year. Salvage tier two is one that we know is coming. We've got damage and breakability, which is the ability to actually uh, as far as like ramming ships, it'll record that, but its main function will be in breaking ships up so that they can be digested by a ship like the Reclaimer that actually has that munching capability. And even the Vulture has it to a lesser extent. It has that little tiny grinder up front and it'll be able to do that, just not to the extent that the Reclaimer can. So damage and breakability is one aspect of that. And that is actually wrapping this month. So it should be wrapping in a couple weeks, barring bad news on the next roadmap, which should be dropping next week. But in addition to that, we have salvage tier two, or they, they don't call it tier two, they call it vehicle munching. And that is actually once you strip off the skin, because if you munch a ship with the skin on it, you're basically just grinding all that stuff down. You're going to lose the skin. So salvage is going to be very, much whereas mining is kind of technical and getting it in the window and breaking the rock perfectly mining is going to be much more order of operations so you're going to be pulling the components you're going to be venting out the gas uh if you've ever seen um hard space ship breaker that's a perfect example that you don't just rip the chunks off the outside and throw it on the pad for sale. You're actually going through and you're very strategically taking the ship apart. And salvage in Star Citizen should be working pretty much the same way. You will go into a ship, you'll pull the components, you'll vent the gas, you'll pull any fluids that are in there, uh, pull out anything of value like I don't know if you'll be able to pull MFDs, but there will be probably more than just the components, I would assume, any cargo that's in there. Then you'll pull off the skin, and then all you're left with is, like, the shell of the ship, and that's when you break the thing up and munch it. But the next level we know is just that ship munching. So right now, you'll probably have to take off the skin and then munch the skeleton. And that's as far as salvage will go for this level. But in the coming months, it's going to become much more involved than that, where you're actually taking out physical components. So this one is definitely coming, but I'm not sure which game loop it would necessarily go into and of course i'm talking about towing and towing on its own doesn't seem like much of a game loop although uh they might start with the new ship aerodynamics you might have something like a reclaimer land on a planet and then it literally can't lift off the planet without tow boats pulling it up so people that own the Argo SRV will actually be able to take a contract 
and go and help them off the ground. Now, is that coming this year? I don't know, but the Argo SRV and big tractor beams definitely are. And in my view, this is kind of the tier zero level of recovery and repair, which is the thing that the Crucible will actually be working on. And gang, that's pretty much it for all the game loops that I think have a shot of coming this year. If you think that missed any, let me know. I know that there's some dark horses out there that aren't really game loops like stealth gameplay. I could see that one coming in, something that would be, especially with the underground facilities where you actually have to infiltrate and go in. You'll have to dress like a scientist. So we've seen an example of this during sitcom a few years back. Uh, when they introduced Microtech, where the guy actually dressed up like a scientist to get in the door, but then he had to sneak around. So stealth gameplay, I could see something like that coming. There's not really any indicators yet, but there's a possibility. So if you think I've missed something, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for listening to this and catch me next time. Mm -hmm.